there's an old saying about weather in the Pacific Northwest. If you don't like the weather, wait 30 minutes, it will change. There may be some truth to that statement, particularly when you consider winds. Sometimes strong winds are widespread and may last for many hours. There are also situations when strong winds are observed in a small area and the winds will fluctuate from a light breeze to very windy and back to a light breeze within a short period of time. This week is Winter Weather Awareness Week in the Pacific Northwest. Today we will focus on strong winds. We will discuss what causes winds to increase and what you can do to be prepared if damaging winds, blowing snow, and low wind chills are forecast for your area. Let's begin by describing what causes the winds to blow. Winds blow from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. Winds are nature's way of equalizing pressure, which is the second law of thermodynamics. That is, higher energy states move toward lower energy states. The pressure gradient force is what drives the winds. Pressure gradients are lines of equal pressure that you see on many surface weather maps. The stronger the pressure gradients, the stronger the winds. The weather map on the bottom left corner shows the tight pressure gradients during the historical Columbia State Storm in 1962. A tight pressure gradient at the surface can be responsible for significant winds. Combine a tight pressure gradient and strong winds in the upper atmosphere, then you may have a case of extreme winds. The graphic you see here is an image of a strong jet stream across the United States. The jet stream can direct storm systems, provide upper level support to enhance precipitation, and also force strong winds in the upper atmosphere down towards the surface under certain conditions. Many locations in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho are susceptible to strong or even violent winds that accelerate down the lee side of a mountain. These complex cases, called downslope winds, are small scale and often produce localized damaging winds. Strong winds in the upper atmosphere may create mountain waves. Sometimes the waves are trapped, with little to no effect in the lower elevations. However, there are times when the strong ridgetop winds associated with the mountain waves accelerate to the lower elevations with sudden strong wind gust. This winter, winds can create more problems than property damage. Extreme wind chill, snow drifts, and blizzards are also major weather concerns. Strong winds and snow can be a deadly combination. Before traveling or venturing outdoors this winter, be sure to check the latest forecast. Dress appropriately. Wear several layers of loose-fitting, lightweight, warm clothing. Trapped air between the layers will insulate you. Remove layers to avoid sweating and subsequent chill. Outdoor garments should be tightly woven, water repellent, and hooded. Wear a hat because much of your body heat can be lost from your head. Cover your mouth to protect your lungs from extreme cold. Mittens snug at the wrist are better than gloves. Try to stay dry and out of the wind. This week is Winter Weather Awareness Week in the Pacific Northwest. On behalf of the National Weather Service offices in Seattle, Spokane, Portland, Pendleton, Medford, Boise, and Pocatello, I want to thank you for listening.